join kids hat family <laughs> Tofu, can you take the floor please? I will climb up the ladder and do the shelves at the top. Why do I have to do the floor? Because the shelves are higher and tougher to clean. You are just saying that because you don't want to do the floors. Oh boy, Tofu, it's not that. You won't be able to reach the shelves, trust me. Sure, I will be. Okay. Come on up then. But let me tell you, you're being like the crab. Like the crab? Now what's that? Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time there lived a crab in the sea. I am so bored of living in the sea. I think the meadow behind the beach is a better place for me to be. I will move there. And so the crab came out of the water and made its way beyond the beach. and into the meadow Ah this is the life I wonder why I didn't do this earlier Unknown to the crab a fox had been watching him since the moment he came into the meadow One day when he found the right moment he attacked him I have been waiting for this moment I will eat you now The crab tried to hide but it didn't know how to Not on land anyway he was not familiar with the terrain at all It's my fault. I should have stayed in the seas and the beach where I belong and know how to protect myself. Well, yes, but now it's too late for you. Saying so, the fox quickly ate the crab and ended his life. Do you still think you can handle the tall shelves? Ah, uh, I think I will wait till next year to find out. For now, I will just take care of the floors. Oh God! Somebody help me! The insect has bitten me. Oh God! Come, let me put some ice. Why did it happen to me? Let me tell you a story. The fox and the stork. Once, a fox and a stork were friends, and the fox invited the stork for dinner. Dear friend, I wish to invite you for a meal at my home. I will cook a delicious soup for you. I would love to come. The 
fox made a delicious soup as promised. The fox was very clever and played a cruel trick. When the stork visited his home that evening, she was given a shallow dish filled with soup. Thus the fox could easily lap up, but the stork could only wet the end of her bill in it. I have made this delicious soup. Myself, enjoy your meal. Poor stork did not say anything and pretended to enjoy the meal. At the end of the evening, however, the stork went home hungry. One week later, the stork invited the fox for lunch at her house. Dear fox, why don't you come to my house for lunch? I am cooking fish for the meal, said the stork. Thank you, dear stork. I would be happy to come said the fox. The stork made delicious fish. When the fox arrived, the stork served the fish in a pitcher. The fox stared hungrily at the food, but he could not taste it. He had a thick snout and couldn't eat from the pitcher. So all he could manage to do was to lick the outside of the pitcher. Did you enjoy the lunch, my friend? I made it especially for you, asked the stock with a nasty smile. The fox remembered his cruel trick on the stork and had to confess that the clever stork made him learn a lesson. The stork enjoyed the meal while the fox looked on sheepishly and went home hungry. So Tofu as the fox did bad to the stork, the stork did bad to him too. Because one bad turn deserves another. Now I understand. is not nice tofu what if your friends find out they will stop talking to you won't they oh no i am so clever they won't find out ever let me tell you the story of another clever boy called tom sawyer Sawyer lived with his aunt Polly and half-brother Sid. He was an extremely clever boy who loved mischief. But Tom also had a very good luck which always helped him get away with the mischief he did. One day, his Aunt Polly was looking for him. Tom! Tom! Where are you? She looked everywhere. She looked outside in the yard. Inside in the house and the kitchen. She looked in her room too, but he was nowhere. 
she went back to his room and called to him. Tom, stop hiding and come out now. But there was no answer. Suddenly, Aunt Polly saw something move under Tom's bed. She thought it was Tom. She bent down and swiftly pulled the bed cover. A cat that Tom had hidden there sprung out at Aunt Polly. Surprised looking at this, she shouted, Oh dear, where did Tom get the cat? Wait till I find that boy. Just as Aunt Polly was shooing the cat out of the window, she felt someone behind her. It was Tom trying to escape from the room. He had been hiding in the cupboard. Aunt Polly caught him by the collar. Tom, what were you doing hiding in the cupboard? You ate all the jam, didn't you? Uh, no, Aunt Polly. I haven't even touched the jam. It must have been Sid. Don't you lie to me, young man. I can see the jam all over your face. Tom quickly tried to wipe his face, but it was too late. Today I am going to beat you with a stick. You have become too mischievous. Aunt Polly, look behind you. Aunt Polly turned to see, but there was no one. It was just one of Tom's tricks. And this time he used it to get away from Aunt Polly. Because when she turned around again, he wasn't there. Oh, this boy! One of these days I am going to punish him! Tom was so happy with himself for fooling Aunt Polly again that he decided to take the day off from school. Instead, he went to the river and bathed in it. At lunchtime, he went into a nearby farm, stole fruits from there and ran out of there with the owner chasing behind him. Just as he was running, he bumped into Sid. Sid saw Tom's wet hair and clothes and the fruits in his hands and understood that Tom hadn't gone to school, but he didn't say anything. When Tom reached home, Aunt Polly was waiting for him and she was angry. Tom understood that Sid had told her everything. Tom, did you skip school again? Uh, no Aunt Polly, Sid is lying. How did you know Sid said anything to me? Well, for once Tom had got himself into trouble. He had no answer for Aunt Polly's question. Tomorrow is Saturday. You don't have school. You will not go anywhere. Instead, you will whitewash the fence. Uh, the entire fence? Yes, the entire fence. That is your punishment. Tom had no choice. He couldn't argue with Aunt Polly. He didn't want to make her angrier, but he was angry too. The fence would take up his whole Saturday. He went into the yard and kicked at the dust. Just then, he saw Sid coming in. He quickly made a mud ball and swung it at him. Ah! Stop! Help, Aunt Polly! Why did you have to tell anything to Aunt Polly? Tom flung a few more mud balls at Sid and then jumped over the fence and ran away. He knew he was already punished so nothing worse could happen now. 
Next morning, when Tom came down for breakfast, he was greeted with a pail of paint and paint brushes. Aunt Polly had been serious about his punishment. So Tom ate his breakfast and went into the yard to whitewash the fence. Painstakingly, he finished a bit of it. That's when his friend Joe came up to him. Hey Tom, why are you working on a Saturday morning? Working? Who said anything about working? Well, why are you painting the fence then? I am doing it because it is art. Haven't you heard of art, Joe? Well, I have, but I have never done it. Is it fun? Oh yes, it is. Why else would I do it? Joe thought about it. It was true. Tom Sawyer would never do anything that wasn't fun. He asked Tom if he could also try it. Tom agreed to let Joe do only a small portion of it in exchange of three marbles. Joe thought Three marbles was too much, but agreed. He wanted to try art. A little while later, their friend Jim came. He saw Tom resting under the tree and Joe painting the fence. He went to Joe. What are you doing, Joe? It is art. I paid Tom three marbles to let me do it. Three marbles? Uh, is it that good? Yes, very good. Jim dashed to Tom immediately and asked if in exchange of his fish book, he too could whitewash the fence. Tom feigned some reluctance, but agreed. And so it went on. Other friends of Tom came and believed that painting the fence was fun. They paid Tom in collectors' cards, candies and even a catapult to get a chance to paint the fence. By noon, the entire fence was painted and Tom was a rich boy. He hid his treasures and went to his aunt. It's done. What? Unbelievable. Let me see. Aunt Polly took Tom with her to see the fence. Indeed, it was done. And it was done very nicely. How did he do it? Anyway, his punishment is over. Now I will have to let him go. I hope he does not create more mischief. But as always, when Aunt Polly turned around to tell Tom that his punishment was over, he was already gone. The next day was Sunday and Tom went to Sunday school. When he reached there, he saw a new girl. and was smitten by her. He desperately wanted to impress her. He thought of a way he could prove himself better than the other boys. 
He went to one of the smartest boys in the class. And bought from him all his yellow tickets in exchange of the treasure he had earned from his friends yesterday. The yellow tickets were awarded only to those boys who had learned all the verses of the Bible. Usually, only older boys were able to get the yellow tickets. When you had enough yellow tickets, you could exchange them for a Bible. The minister asked the class, Does anyone have enough yellow tickets for a Bible? Nobody had so many tickets. Except Tom, who raised his hand. Everybody, including the minister, was surprised. Tom was the most naughty boy they knew. How could he have learnt all the verses of the Bible? The minister understood this was one of Tom's tricks. And he decided to test him. Very well done, Tom. Please come here and collect your Bible. Also, as is tradition, when you earn your Bible, you get to recite any three of your favorite verses from it. Tom was stumped. Three verses? He didn't even know one. He fumbled. Uh, mm, uh, um. The whole class laughed at him as they understood that mischievous Tom had got into a big soup this time. Do you still think you will never get caught? Oh no, Tia. I have to go and tell my friends the truth and apologize to them right away. to the fest later tonight. Later tonight? It's not safe to go alone, Tofu. And I won't be going because I have an exam tomorrow. So you won't be able to go either. But Jack said it's safe. And Joe and Jim, everyone is going. Who told him? Some older boys. We don't know them. They were visiting from another city. That's not the correct way to do things, Tofu. You have to double check some things for yourself at times. And be careful with whom you trust. Do you know what happened to Chicken Little and his friends? What happened to them? Chicken Little Chicken Little liked to walk in the woods. One day, as she was walking in the forest and looking at the flowers and the trees, an acorn fell from a tree on the top of her head. Oh no! The sky is falling! I must run and tell the lion about it immediately. And so Chicken Little began running. On the way, she met the Henny Penny, the hen. Where are you running to? Is everything okay? Oh no, Henny Penny! The sky is falling and I'm going to the lion to tell him about it. How do you know that? It fell on my head and hit me. That's terrible. Come, I'll go with you too. We must hurry and tell the lion about this. Chicken Little and Henny Penny started running. As they were heading to the lions, they met Ducky Lucky. 
Wait, guys, wait. Where are you going in such a hurry? The sky is falling. It fell on Chicken Little's head. We are going to the lion to tell him about it. Let me also come with you. Come, come. As the three of them were running, they met Foxy Loxy. Where are you guys going? The sky is falling. It fell on Chicken Little's head. And we've decided to go to tell the lion about it. Yes, yes. The lion must be told about this. But do you know where he lives? The fox had pointed out this problem correctly. None of them knew where the lion lived. I know where he lives. Come with me and I will show you the way. Happy to have found help, the three of them agreed. The fox took them to his own den and told them to wait at its entrance as he went inside. Wait here. Let me go talk to the lion first. When he is ready to meet you, he will call you all inside. After a while, Foxy Loxy called from inside. Come in, friends. Chicken Little, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky went inside but never came out again. So you see, Tofu, you should always exercise caution before you go following things blindly. Yes, Tia. Now I have understood the importance of trusting the right people and not believing things blindly. Tonight, I am going to stay home and will tell my friends to do the same too. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.